Matt, almost everything's the same. Cincy, uh, they somehow reason have a handle on KC. They're the dueling quarterbacks, young stars. Jamar Chase back in the lineup. He missed four games with a hip injury. How's the hip? Well, the hands are still good, and the hip looks all right, too. 40 yards and a first down right there. Chase up and over. Bengals moving the chains. Even though he only 10 yards, he, he got 40. Trent Taylor, handoff stopped in his tracks by Carlos Dunlop on fourth and one. So the Bengals leave some points out there. Still lead 14-10 at the half. Into the third, third and seven. Patrick Mahomes, MVS behind the defense. He hauls that one in. Good for 42. Get some new downs. Chiefs coming out hot. Isaiah Pacheco, look at old number 10, pound in there. Chiefs lead 17 to 14. Bengals coming right back at you. Third and three, that's a money down for a quarterback. Uh, our boy Tyler Boyd is open and dropped it. One more time. First drop in two seasons. So I guess we see it twice, but he still only has mm -hmm. one drop. That's too bad. Settle for a field goal, even at 17. Mahomes, is MVS out there again running behind people? That's a great catch by him. He dropped one in the end zone earlier, too, but he gets this one, so it's another first down. Chiefs, fourth and goal. What do you have here from the three? We're going for it. Mahomes up in, balls loose. What do we have now? He goes over defenders. Are we breaking the plane? We're going to look at it and say yes. That's ruled a touchdown. I, I, listen, inconclusive to me, ruled a touchdown. 24-17, Chefs. Who's cooking here? 24-20, Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. This is what happens sometimes when you work a little too hard at your job. He's just trying to grind out yards, and they yank the ball away from him. Jermaine Pratt's got it. Bengals get it. Good field position. Here comes Jackpot Joey. Going to float one up to Chris Evans. Uh, this one, not the other one. I, I prefer Captain, Captain America? America. He's Chris Evans, too. Sexiest man alive. Yeah, he's got his kind of Sex beefcake people, calendars out there and everything. Bengals capitalizes 27 24. Mahomes scrambling, sacked there on third and three by Joseph Osai for a loss. Mahomes limping to the sideline. He's not happy about this, especially after the Chiefs miss a 55 yard field goal to tie it. So it's 27 24. Third and five. Burrow, good to have Chase back. Little security blanket thing flips it out there, and he just does all the work by himself. Number one, get me a first down as he crosses it. Joey's got three wins now against the Chiefs, all of them by three points. Nobody else has beaten Patrick Mahomes three times. That'll seal it. T. Higgins has got it. Bengals going to kneel. Final two plays, run out the clock, win it 27-24. So then there's this. Chiefs fell to the two seed. Thanks to their week six loss to the Bills, both teams are nine and three. KC still a slight favorite over Buffalo to earn the number one seed as the Chiefs have one game left against a team with a winning record. The Bills have three. And oh, by the way, Cincy that started 0-2, 8-2 in its last 10 games. So they are in good position, better than a 91% chance to make the playoffs. Tim Hasselbeck, we have star quarterbacks. The last two guys to play in the big game from the AFC, please. Please tell me this isn't true that you want to talk about a running game because that's not <laughs> sexy. <laughs> no, it's not, but it's going to help Cincinnati win football games, much like it did, John, last week against the Tennessee Titans. You know, I think we look at, or at least people have looked at Cincinnati as kind of a finesse team with all that talent on the perimeter. But look, Samaj P. Ryan, who's not even a starting running back, Joe Mixon is obviously still out with a concussion. He had over 20 carries in this football game, had over 100 yards. You look back to what they did a week ago against the Tennessee Titans. They ran the football there as well. And so I just think there's an element of their ability to do that um, that's important for them to, to win games, not only to close this season out, but also in the postseason because that will travel. It will keep opposing you know, quarterbacks that are good ones like Patrick Mahomes off the field. Uh, and I just think that it also, you know, is you're running into good looks because of all the attention on the receivers. So I, I've seen something that I didn't think I would see out of Cincinnati, and that's kind of a physicality that I think they were missing at times a year ago. You're right, and it runs in December and January. That's fine. Next thing you know, you want to talk about a turnover battle. Uh, hang tight because we've got to ask you, we're worried you might not be here next Sunday, that you might be on the 49ers active roster. <laughs> they might need a quarterback. In fact, I know that they do. Yes. Uh, Dolphins paying a visit to the 49ers, which means Mike McDaniel is facing his former team for the first time during his stint as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. First quarter, 
literally the opening drive the first play to a tongue of Iloa to Trent Sherfield and you're like oh my it is going to be one of those days for the Dolphins he busts out a 75 yard touchdown run and you're thinking okay prepare for scoring it's seven nothing first drive for the 49ers Jimmy Garoppolo drops back and man is brought down problem is he's brought down and in foot does he need surgery yes is he done for the season yes so bring in the rookie backup quarterback Brock Purdy by the way that drive would end in a field goal next drive for the 49ers down 7-3 Purdy to Kyle Juszczyk and that is career touchdown number one there would be more like this one seven seconds left in the half it's tied at 10 untie it Purdy to Christian McCaffrey his third receiving touchdown of the season Niners go up seven going into the break third quarter Dolphins down 10 Tua rolls left pass is tipped by Tyreek Hill that is a pick to a second of the game some of his passes just were not on target Niners did tack on field goal so now it is 23 10 Tua again he's got all the time in the world so he launches that one where's Tyreek right there 45 yard score Dolphins climbing back in it's 23 17 two minutes to go it's now 26 17 Tua hit Nick Bosa ball comes loose Dre Greenlaw gonna land on it runs into the end zone Bosa gets his third sack of the day the Niners win 33 17 despite also losing their second starting quarterback of the season which led us to Brock Purdy Mr. Irrelevant in the 2022 draft is now totally relevant for that Niners offense but on the mm -hmm. other side of the things it's the Dolphins and what we saw today with Tua struggling a number of his targets just off the mark where did he go wrong well, listen, I just think he was inaccurate, which is not typical for Tua. I think it's one of the best things about him as a quarterback is he's typically playing on time and throwing the ball with good accuracy. I really felt like he missed one early, and that was the one he missed early where he wasn't under pressure. But then I do think they didn't have a great plan for Bosa. It injuries on the offensive line, so he's under some pressure. And I think from that point on, there just were opportunities where he just wasn't placing the football uh, the way that he normally did. And I think when they go back and look at this, they're going to feel like they left a lot of plays out on the field. And look, when you look at Miami's upcoming schedule, this was the first of three games that was going to be a big time challenge. Also a couple of them, you know, away from home. And so when that happens and you see missed opportunities, that's going to be hard to watch, uh, you know, tomorrow and as you get ready, you know, to, to kind of close things out and hopefully make a playoff run. I loved what we talked about earlier with, with, with Kittle talking about Brock Purdy, about being a guy who puts in the work, he is prepared, and then when he got his chance today with the injury to Garoppolo, he came in and he put the Niners in a position to, to win that game. What did you see from him? I thought he played great. I mean, he got 25 completions coming in off the bench. That's not easy to do, and look, he just looked comfortable and assured of where to go with the football, and uh, you know, the only way you look that way is if you are planning and preparing as if you are going to be in the game, and you know, not every backup is able to do that. He clearly did. I thought Kyle Shanahan also did a nice job of getting him easy completions. That's something that Kyle's done a very good job of throughout his career. But that example right there with a touchdown pass to McCaffrey, the timing he played with. I mean, he, he clearly knew the plan, knew where to go with the football. I think that's actually a very good sign for San Francisco, even though they're all the way down to their third-string quarterback. So obviously they have quarterback questions. There might be some quarterback questions in New York, too. Mm -hmm. Jets, Vikings.